Hello everyone and welcome to another video covering the AQA GCSE Computer Science course. Um, we're now on to the third topic listed in the specification called Program Flow Control. So first let's define that term before we begin anything else. So Program Flow Control can be defined simply as the order in which a program is executed and the means um, that it is executed. Um, there are three different ways to do this mainly but we'll get to that later. So first let's have a look at um, structured programs and why it's um, an advantage to have structured programs. So this means that your program isn't messy, it isn't organized. Um, and so when it's structured, it, de it decreases the complexity of the task um, because everything is completed in a logical manner, um, which means a program should take less time, time to code because um, you know exactly what you're doing, you know what should come next, um, which is, is quite simple and easy to, easy to do. Um, also, this logical structure uh, means that the code has increased clarity. So what you're writing is more clear than it would be if it was messy, which is which is fairly obvious. And this means that faults and errors can be recognized quicker and uh, with, with further ease, um, which again makes the programmer's job uh, far easier, um, but it also um, increases the efficiency that the program can be completed in of the time frame. Um, and a structured program also means that many programmers can work on one program um, at the same time. So many people would assume that when we're talking about programs, we're talking about the simple programs that um, an individual could do, um, such as when practicing and stuff. But no, we're, talk we're talking, a lot of this applies to, to large um, projects such as, I don't know, the latest video game or a uh, like a an image software op, um, system or application or something like that. Um, so many um, programming com companies will have many people working on one project um, and when it's structured um, uh, logically many people can um, they know what they're doing and when you all put it together so when you piece all the, all the small pieces together um, it'll work but if everyone's working just randomly and in a messy way then when you put it together it likely won't work first time and that's not what you want because that wastes time and money and this this whole um, situation means increased productivity all right let's have a look at those three um, flow um, uh, types well let's not actually know we'll do that next but let, let's have a look at flow charts so um, structure can be represented and programs can be planned using flow charts and there are four main flow chart symbols you need to know um, so the first one is start. This is obviously the first um, one in your flowchart, and the flowchart can be a single process or a whole program depending on um, the level at which you want to complete it. And um, this block only has one output and no input, obviously, because it's the first block. Um, then you have a process block, and this represents an operation carried out by the process or, or sorry, I should say program. And uh, these blocks must have an input and an output. Obviously, this is very general, so you can make this as detailed as you want. Um, you may want to, while doing this, fill in what you're doing so it, it's obvious because process can mean literally anything. Um, but this flowchart is designed to be as simple as possible, ideally. Um, then you have the decision block. So this represents a question with only two answers. Um, therefore, it has one input and two outputs. Um, and it basically makes a Boolean choice, uh, true or false, as we, as we know. Um, we went through that in a previous video. Um, so essentially, yes or no as well. And then finally you have an end block which is obviously the opposite of a start symbol um, which means it's only got one input and no outputs. So now <laughs> finally let's have a look at the code, um, the uh, coded solutions for basic building blocks of such which is basically how program flow um, can be controlled. Um, so you can make uh, selections in your code which is where the program's execution path is determined by statements so case statements and we'll look at those in a future video um, but simply here you can see you can see this um, I've set I've assigned a variable to five and I'm testing whether this variable equals it actually is five and if it is then the test uh, is passed and if it isn't the test failed and obviously you can see the variable is five so the test will result in a pass and the else statement will never actually get used um, so basically, um, when you have multiple case statements and multiple tests, um, the, you can sort of imagine the, the execution path weaving away, weaving through, not actually running every single line of code. Um, and so, you know, you could almost, the path would go one way or it could go the other way, or many different ways. Um, then you have an iteration, and iteration simply means repetition. And these uh, are a single statement or multiple statements for are executed in a loop until its criteria are met. So um, 
this means basically you can't um, go through the program unless something's done. So this is useful for maybe a password scenario. Obviously, um, code that deals with passwords is far more complex than this. But if you say for hypothetically a password is 10, um, and this code will basically make you enter the password until um, it equals 10. So um, as you can see, it says while user input um, is not equal to password, it will then ask you to input it again. If you don't understand this code, don't worry, it's just an example. As long as you understand what an iteration is, um, often while um, uh, loops are used, um, but again, this will be a future video topic, so it will be in more detail. Um, so that's that's the second of the three. It's also sequence, and this is when each action follows a previous action, action basically line by line, which is pretty much what um, all programs are with just a few selections and iterations in it. So uh, that's it for the video. Thanks a lot for watching. Um, I hope you've learned something, and uh, best of luck in your exams.